real subject, rev, uh, conje queries and conjectures of Jacob Delafon. Jacob Delafon reads, to treat a fever, cut a cockchafer in two, tape half of it to your right arm and the other half to your left. He wonders about this. What actually is a cockchafer? He finds it a disturbing term. <laughs> he looks it up. It is a pale brown nocturnal beetle flying with a large, with a loud whirring sound. All this is theoretical. Jacob has no fever. <laughs> Jacob Delafon reads somewhere that all human activity lies along two opposing vectors, the centrifugal push of paranoia and the centripetal pull of hysteria. <laughs> Jacob Delafon has read of a debate among doctors as to whether nuns or prostitutes are more susceptible to hysteria. Jacob Delafon, noting that Parsifal, like his cousin Lancelot, is a descendant of Joseph of Arimathea, who in turn is of the house of David, in short, that Parsifal is a Jew, wonders if Wagner was aware of this. <laughs> Were. Do not alarm yourself. I could not rest content with moral lectures and continual repetition. Like the solar system, I could not hold my head up, made endlessly to glow. Destined for grand ceremonies, I was much affected by finding myself so thin and so worn down. We use theory to mean it is possible to choose, e.g., why I'm just the size I am. A million, million, a cool and mortifying manner, what governs motion? Jacob Delafon is surprised to read of ancient astronomers who defied time. Later he realizes it is a misprint for deified. <laughs> Time is something Jacob Delafon would prefer not to think about, but it does disturb him that while time seems, moving image of eternity, to slide around him somehow on its way elsewhere, at the same time, time, he mutters, there it is again, appears also completely at rest standing absolutely still while he himself plunges or is plunged through it. If he reads that time began only with the creation, waste and void or Big Bang, he wonders what came before and is appalled how some have supposed that we have a completely new space for each tick of elapsed time. He would like to tear himself from the past if, that is, he could postpone the future. He feels the present as time borrowed, a borrowing beyond his means, a debt he can never hope to pay. He would pay whatever he could to believe that time contradicts itself. He would give anything for a timely miracle. He craves an interval. He dreams an end of time but thinks, what then? And tries to believe, as has been claimed, that when the heavenly bodies cease to rotate, then also his soul will cease to yearn. Jacob Delafon is told that after death, we will know nothing, but pain will continue. He regards this as unwarranted optimism. <laughs> His problem, Jacob Delafon decides, is how not to exist without losing consciousness. <laughs> Singular. Have spoilt me, you have.
bodies of planets. Angels forced to postulate matter. Asked her, I asked, if she would like to dance how crude we are. Composed of ether, of either, is it for such insults that I have climbed all these flights? Mindfulness, Jacob Delafon decides, is not thoughtfulness, but he cannot stop this train of thought. Neither, he continues, his ideas as usual in flight, is it a white cloak on a floating island, nor creature of the night, not cat, not bat, not even dream, not the hatching of flocks while underground. Odd, he thinks, how everything conspires. Strange, Renga. Jacob Delafon is unable, despite fervent effort, to forsake images, to move beyond a world of images. He knows, of course, that they distort him, project onto him the shapes of animals, that the deep, but to nice distinction, in spite of himself, he still prefers the shadows of resemblance. His most personal cry has a universal sound like words. Interval. The optimum level of arousal where there is nothing to see. After I die, deepest and dearest sorrow, I'll masquerade, pointing to various degrees of substance until all tears otherwise. Jacob Delafon reads that when painting the portrait of a living creature, it helps first to sketch the bones. He cannot bring himself to start. Jane Floodcab posed before him, so likely it seems to him that he will never be up to add in veins or sinew, much less clothing the body with flesh and skin. In the dark, Jacob Delafon finds everything simple. The dark has no distracting surfaces, no inside and outside, no layering, nothing deep, nothing seamy. In daylight, amid the dimensions of sight, among so many hidden things, fully hidden, partly hidden, profundities, opacities, mysteries of position and composition. He does not understand anything. 